2007 NAFB Hall of Fame Awards are brought to you by the United Soybean Board. Our soybean checkoff. Effective. Efficient. Farmer driven. Winners of the award include Bob Bice, Larry Haig, Herb Plambeck, Chuck Wooster, Lane Beatty, Sam Schneider, Bob Miller, Marvin Vines, Roy Battles, George Bigger, Phil Alampi, Earl Sargent, John McDonald, Russell Pearson, Mal Hansen, Art Page, Milt Bliss, Jack Timmons, George Logan, Maynard Spies, Wallace Catterley, Ray Wilkinson, Bill McReynolds, George Stevens, Jack Jackson, Dix Harper, Frank Atwood, Orion Samuelson, Dean Curtis, Art Sechrist, Wayne Lyles, Roddy Peoples, Ed Sluzarzik, Bill Drips, John Baker, Keith Kirkpatrick, Creighton Canal, Jack Crowner, Ed Johnson, Cliff Mitchell, Harry Martin, and Gene Reagan. Now, here is our first NAFB Hall of Fame inductee for 2007. George Menard was a true pioneer farm broadcaster in both radio and television. He was also the last NAFB president when the association was known as the NATRFD in 1964. Menard was born in 1911, the youngest of seven children, and raised on a farm near Sioux City, Iowa. Blessed with a beautiful voice, George entered Notre Dame in 1929 and was a soloist with the Notre Dame Glee Club all four years. A famed football coach, Newt Rockney, used to say, get that little French kid over here to sing Irish songs at pep rallies before football games. He earned college money singing, working as a soda jerk, and one summer in the information office at the Chicago World's Fair. George Menard's first radio job came in 1935. He was farm market reporter at WROK in Rockford, Illinois, and soon he added duties as production manager, announcer, and creator of the Barn Dance program, where he sang with the Black Hawk Valley Boys. While there, he met and married Martha McNess. In 1934, while still at Notre Dame, young George was a guest on Uncle Ezra's program on WLS. Now that's when the radio bug bit and he vowed someday to work for the station. That opportunity came in 1938 when George was named Farm Program Director for the Prairie Farmer Station. He hosted dinner bell time and did several morning shows. He also wrote a column with the byline of The Hired Hand and soon his singing and announcing won him a place on the WLS National Barn Dance. He was known 
as the Prairie Singer. Menard worked for 10 years at WLS. For 17 years, George announced and sang on the Mutual Network program, Man on the Farm. Stand by, it's time for the fun. By special wire from the Quaker Oats Experimental Farm near Libertyville, Illinois, 45 miles northwest of Chicago, the makers of the famous Full of Pep Feeds for poultry and livestock are transcribing the Man on the Farm. In TV, Menard became a creator of programs. With the help of his daughter Paula, he did Pet Shop on WGN-TV and the DeMont Network. He had a two-hour fun and features program on WBKB, where he also hosted Farmtown USA every Saturday night. With this program, George introduced the city audience to farm people and livestock. The WBKB studio was on the 11th floor of the State Lake Building in Chicago and he made many a trip up that freight elevator with farm animals of all kinds. Once he even took six cows, representing each dairy breed. George had a knack for making both human and livestock guests feel comfortable in front of the camera. Later, that program moved to WBBM-TV and ran until 1955. Menard became farm director at WBBM Radio and Television in 1952. On his farm television program, he was assisted by a rooster named Caruso. In 1961, he introduced Junior Newsroom. This was a news show for children and was considered revolutionary, the only one of its kind in the country. When the CBS-owned stations discontinued farm programs in 1968, George continued on staff until retirement. That happened in 1972. George and Martha had three daughters, Martha Ann, Noel, and Paula. They kept him busy, as did his many hobbies. First it was leather work, and then a sailboat in Wilmette Harbor, building his own puddle jumper bike too. His creativity found an outlet in many places, including furniture and toy building projects. George attended every NAFB meeting from the founding of the association and he served on many committees, was elected vice president in 1963 and president in 1964. He was especially proud of being made an honorary NAFB member in 1968. George was active in his community and served as the president of the Notre Dame Club of Chicago and as a soloist and choir member at St. Francis for 25 years. Over the decades, George Menard won many awards and was recognized often, including by the Farm Bureau for Farmtown USA, interpreting agriculture to the public, the 1959 American Farm Bureau Distinguished Achievement Award, the National Safety Council, the Office of Civil Defense Award of Merit, by the Forest Industries, the Chicago Board of Trade, the Chicago Federated Advertising Club for Best Farm Program, by Goodwill Industries, and maybe most importantly, the Best Grandpa Award for Outstanding Accomplishments in Grandpahood.